Hi, Tom Trento here with a very special edition of our series on the war in Israel. Today we're going to bring you a unique and critically important interview from an individual who is one of the West's top leaders on the issue of Islamic Jihad. In fact, as a young man, our special guest traveled to Israel, lived there for two years working all over the country. Since that time, he has returned to Israel from his home country, the Netherlands, over 40 times. In 2006, he was elected in the Netherlands as a member of parliament. He, has, he is the chairman of his party, the PVV, the Party for Freedom. In 2008, he made a 17-minute movie comparing Islamic verses with Islamic Jihad. As a result of that movie, he now requires constant protection from the Dutch security forces. He literally has given up his personal freedom so he can speak to the world about the concept of freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our show the Honorable Mr. Geert Wilders. Mr. Wilders, sir, how are you today? I'm fine. So good to see you, uh, Tom. How are you? Doing well and a uh, very, very sad situation we have uh, over in the Middle East in Israel. You've spent a couple of years there and I've uh, been yeah. there many, many times. Right now, as we start this interview, what are your words to the, to the people, the people of the country of Israel? Well, I think um, um, we should be in full support. The whole world actually should be in full support to the people of Israel. I mean, they are, as a matter of fact, uh, fighting our fight. I always say that Israel is the um, canary in the coal mine. They are a beacon of light in an area of total darkness. And today, uh, they are actually fighting our fight because, once again, it's between freedom and barbarity. So I believe, yes, that the whole world, certainly my country, the Netherlands, but the United States, any free country in the West, should support Israel because if we lose Israel, um, um, we will be next and freedom will go away. Well, you, you mentioned the, uh, the, the civilized countries around the world. We have been monitoring, we're doing this uh, regular special on the war in Israel, and here from the United States, we've been monitoring these, uh, these very vitriolic and hateful demonstrations that are occurring yeah. in Europe, in the United States. And, and from what I understand, uh, you looked out your window the other day. Can you share that with us? Yeah, um, here in The Hague, um, a few um, um, miles even from the Dutch parliament, even closer, there was a demonstration um, against Israel, uh, against uh, the West. And I mean, it was shocking. There were people um, with uh, swastikas, with Nazi flags uh, moving around in the streets of, of The Hague, passing by the Israeli embassy and even um, representatives, uh, members of the governing Labour Party took place in that kind of, um, well, um, hostile um, demonstration. And unfortunately, a, a liberal mayor of The Hague uh, didn't act at all. So it's not only in The Hague. Um, you saw it all over the world, from London to even Norway, from Australia to your own United States. We saw in the last week that a lot of people um, demonstrated against Israel, against freedom, and we all um, tolerated it, unfortunately. Yeah, the, uh, the, the situation even here in the United States is uh, worse than I've seen it. And, and uh, as you know, we've been at this quite a while and we've been in Europe yeah. at some of these demonstrations. What is your analysis of the increased, uh, uh, we're calling it a, a jihad gene, particularly as, as uh, yeah. Syria and all these other countries are, are exploding. What is your analysis? Well, you know, um, um, it's sad to say, but Islam declared war on us. We did not do that, but they declared war on the free West, on Israel, and to you and to me and our countries. I mean, I spoke to so many friends in the last few days, from Australia to the United States, from Canada uh, to uh, France and Britain, and they all said that there is a difference indeed than if you compare it with even half a year ago. There are 10 times as many people demonstrating against Israel, against the West, than half a year ago. They are more confident. They are more brutal. They are wearing swastikas and, like I said, Nazi flags, and they are, they are not afraid anymore. They feel that they are 
on the winning hand. And one thing has not changed, unfortunately, and that is the fact that the political leaders in most of the Western countries, from the United States to the Netherlands, are still acting politically correct, are not acting at all, are still taking the wrong side, are trying to be in favor of Palestinians or Arabs or whatsoever, while we all know that to negotiate, um, to have a ceasefire with Arabs is a token of weakness, is seen as weakness and has the opposite effect that we want to have. Well, well along those lines, you are a, a member of parliament in, uh, in, in one of the leading Western countries, the Netherlands. And yeah. um, uh, from that political perspective, is it possible to deal politically with the Hamas here in the U.S., a designated terrorist organization? Of course it's not possible. You know, Hamas um, or ISIS or any Sunni or even Shia terroristic organization has only one aim, and that is to destroy Israel, uh, to conquer and destroy the West. This is their agenda. And politically correct politicians all over the world make one mistake, for instance, when it comes and we talk about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's not a conflict about territory. It's a conflict about ideology. Look what's happening in Gaza. They got Gaza back from the Israelis. And that's a problem. Diminish? No. The problem only get worse. It's a misconception to think that if you give them territory, that you will have peace. It's not a territorial conflict, Tom. It's about ideology. They want Israel, they want all Jews to be killed, to, to, to leave from, uh, from Earth. Uh, and that is what we are fighting against. Once again, Israel is fighting our fight. We should see what they really are and what we should see what Islam really stands for. And that's violence. That's all the wrong things for people who don't belong to Islam. This is what we are fighting against and this is what we should deal about. Well, along those lines, our organization, the United West, and we're working in conjunction with Frank Affney, who, by the way, says hello to you, Center for Security Policy. Thank you so much. Give my regards back to Frank, please. I, I will, certainly. We have been, been hitting the ideological issue for many years, as your party for freedom, the PVV party yeah. in, in Holland does. Speak to our legislators here to understand the ideology uh, behind Islamic Jihad so that our policies reflect the ideology we're fighting. Yes, you know, um, there is no such a thing as a moderate Islam. This is the first thing that we should admit and that we should see Islam for what it is. There is no moderate Islam. Maybe there are moderate people. Yes, there are people who call themselves Muslims that are moderate. I have nothing against the people, but the ideology of Islam has only one thing for us, and this is um, total destruction. Uh, uh, this is what we are looking at, and this is what we are fighting against. So what we should do is we should stop to import more Islam to our societies. For instance, my party in Holland is um, an advocate of the, the, the stopping of the immigration, the mass immigration from um, Islamic uh, countries. We should stop that. We should, if people leave the Netherlands, if they leave the United States to fight for the jihad um, in Syria or in Iraq, I mean, let them go. Um, we are a free, free country, they can go, but never allow them to come back. Strip them of our Dutch nationality or our American nationality, if they have that, and never allow them back in our society. I mean. Um, the majority of um, all the Arab countries um, are Muslim and uh, have the, uh, the dominant culture of Islam and they are not free. They will never be free. Let's make sure that the children of Israel, that the children of America, that the children of the Netherlands will not wake up one day and be in an unfree Islamic country. So see Islam for what it is. Uh, don't cooperate with it, but fight it. It's the only way. Well, that, that message sounds so crystal clear to, again, those of us who do work on this issue. But yeah. since this, uh, the Operation Protective Edge, the war in, uh, in Israel, has your party, the Party for Freedom, which I know is a controversial party there, but yeah. you're, you're, you're either loved by half your country or hated That's by true. half your country. Has your party um, had a platform now to make more sense out of this ideological issue we're talking about? Well, I mean, uh, we made uh, some public polling in the Netherlands just a few weeks ago, and it proved that the majority of the Dutch people, two-thirds of the Dutch people, feel 
that Islam is not a part of the Dutch culture. A majority of the Dutch people don't want a more immigration from Islamic countries. Three quarters of the Dutch people believe that if jihadists leave the Netherlands, that they should never be allowed to return, um, even if they have family here, and they should, they, that we should reinstate border control. Unfortunately, there is still an enormous gap between the Vox Populi and the political elite. The Dutch government today is still refusing even to debate the issue. I asked, we are now in a summer recess, I asked the parliament to return from summer recess to discuss the issue that is happening in Europe and the Middle East today, today, and the majority refused. So yes, we have a platform. The majority of the Dutch people support our policy, but unfortunately the government in Holland, as in many European countries, as in your own United States, is still looking in the other direction. And I tell you, Tom, we cannot afford to do that any longer. They are winning uh, the fight. We are not, and we should act today. All right, now, uh, a few years back in, uh, I believe it was 2009, when, when we had you here in the United States uh, speaking at a free speech summit, um, we made a, a movie, Geert Wilder's Warning to America. It's been seen by millions of people, 2009. Since then, just five years later, uh, what is your analysis of the situation throughout the West and the Middle East regarding Islamic Jihad? Well, that's exactly what I just told you, uh, Tom. We had um, 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 a policy of governments in the Netherlands and in the West that uh, did not really act, that uh, decided uh, to ignore uh, what Islam really stands for, to ignore the problems that all the mass immigration from Islamic, con Islamic countries brings to our free societies, um, uh, forgot to support Israel. Um, once again, we all are Israel, and their fight is our fight. So um, there was a change, and the change is in the public. If you speak to people in the Netherlands on the streets, or if you look at the polling that we did, and you see it all over Europe, the people are fed up with the politicians that look in the other directions. But the politicians still are not able, are not eager, are afraid, are demis, as I would call them, are cowards not to look into the problem. And I saw a Gallup poll in the United States last week, and it was, I think it was, it, you see a lot in it, that I saw that uh, Mr. Obama, your president, was only supported by a majority of the Muslims. Everybody else did not support the president of America anymore, only the Muslims did. And this means that they are confident, that they are not afraid, that they believe that the American administration would leave them alone, and that I hope uh, your people will stand up in any way, hopefully a democratic way, uh, to answer and to tackle this enormous problem that at the end of the day is threatening our freedom. All right, uh, Mr. Wilders, we only have a couple of minutes left, yeah. but um, I, I want to turn to Israel for a sec. In fact, this whole conversation sure is about Israel, but they have this uh, massive um, and, and excellent defensive mechanism, the Iron Dome. Is there a, a false sense of security to be on the defensive against the Hamas and say, well, you know, we'll fight until they don't want to fight anymore and we can defend ourselves and then we'll have uh, peace for a little while. And, and I even heard the, the Hamas is looking for a Hudna, a 10-year ceasefire. Sure. Share your thoughts with the, the Israelis and, and the Israeli yes. people regarding that kind of thinking. Well, um, I agree with you, Tom. I mean, the Hutna, it's a well-known concept that even Mohammed uh, used when he was um, um, playing the warlord in the Middle East in Mecca, Medina, in, in his time. And it means that they have a pause that they can strengthen again. I mean, um, Islam um, does not allow um, to have a time off. They want uh, to fight us and to certainly to get rid um, of Israel. So I understand that uh, people um, are eager uh, to want the uh, seizure of the uh, violence. But don't forget that at the end of the day, Hamas want to destroy Israel. They won't be finished before Israel is off the planet of the earth and all the Jews are sent into the sea or even killed. And I, well, who am I to give advice to the Israeli people? I want a support, a full support for the Israeli people. But if you ask me um, what I would do, well, I would be very sympathetic to talk 
policy and the suggestions of Mr. Lieberman, Avigdor Lieberman, the ministry, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Israel that I know very well personally. And he said that, well, whatever the Israeli uh, cabinet decides, that at the end of the day, you might have to enter Gaza and to destroy uh, Hamas. I mean, you cannot talk with terrorists. You cannot negotiate with terrorists. The ceasefire they will use in their advantage to fight you again when they are stronger. So I believe, unfortunately, that the terrorists would be, should be destroyed. It will happen sooner or later. And I'm sure that if from the borders, from the Netherlands, from Belgium, or even if from Canada to the United States, people would do what the Palestinians do to Israel today, we would not be so self-restrained as Israel is today. So let's make it clear, Israel should protect itself. And unfortunately, I think it would mean that Hamas should be destroyed. And uh, um, what is your, as we conclude this uh, short time together, yeah. what is your, uh, I got this question and one more after that. What is your, um, your warning now, five years later, your warning to America? Well, my warning to America is that what is happening in Israel today is happening um, on a smaller scale in Europe as well. And like I said a few years ago, it's happening in the United States on a different level, on a different scale. But please don't make the mistake that what is happening in the Middle East today cannot happen in your country tomorrow. See what Islam really stands for. Don't hate Muslims, but see what Islam stands for and make sure that it won't get more dominant in your country today. Fight for freedom. Fight for the freedom of your children and the free rest, which means, first of all, support Israel, especially in this terrible time for our friends in Israel. And uh, on, a, on a closing thought, uh, on this special series we're doing, I, I've been closing each show with a personal admonition for Prime Minister Netanyahu. I'm going to ask you, not as, a, not as an elected member of parliament in the Netherlands, but as a, as a human being, as a, as a lover of freedom, as a Westerner, this man, Benjamin Netanyahu, has the weight of the world on his shoulders. Just uh, uh, from a freedom perspective, from a future perspective, man to man, what, what are your thoughts for Prime Minister Netanyahu? Well, you know, I met Mr. Netanyahu um, several times in Israel, and I know he's a strong man. And even though I might not agree on everything he does, he is the leader of the Israeli cabinet, and he deserves our support. So the only thing I would say to him today would be that remind the words of another hero, Winston Churchill. And Winston Churchill said, and I think the same goes for Israel today, whatever pressure you might have from so-called friends in the West, never give in. Never, never, ever give in. Make your own policy, defend, defend freedom, defend Israel, and you still have, Tom, as you are and I am, and so many million other people still have many friends all over the world that will support Israel, certainly in this difficult time. Mr. Wilders, thank you very, very much for the uh, short time together, and uh, we, may, we may be back to you if this thing continues, okay? Sure. It was a pleasure, Tom. Thank okay. you for being on your show. You take care. Great. Okay. That was uh, a powerful interview. Powerful words from the Honorable Geert Wilders. Folks, take this show, send it out. The essence of the interview today, we have a, a man who has committed his life to communicating freedom and basically giving up his freedoms. May that fact serve as a motivating fact in each of our lives as we fight this enemy that is indeed an eternal enemy to the concepts of Western civilization and Western freedom. And my admonition to Prime Minister Netanyahu today is very simple. Sir, why don't you give Geert Wilders a call?